the cube covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors Red Hat and Cisco. Now here are your hosts, Stu Miniman. And Hi, welcome back to the cube. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with Brian Gracely. It's day one of three of our coverage of OpenStack Summit 2016. Uh, I've got back on the program uh, Chris Wright, uh, who's uh, with Red Hat and uh, first time. Uh, person on theCUBE, it's uh, Vijay Venugopal, who's the Director of Product Management uh, with Cisco NFV. Thank you for joining us. All right, uh, so, so first of all, you know, we, we throw around these terms, you know, NFV all the time. So, you know, those of us with a networking background, we know it's network function virtualization, but maybe Vijay, uh, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, your job, what you do at Cisco, and what is this NFV thing that, uh, you know, to, to a non-networking person? and I lead product management for uh, NFV infrastructure uh, inside of uh, Cisco's NFV business unit. Uh, it's a newly formed business unit inside of Cisco specifically focused on enabling NFV for customers. To answer your question, uh, what is NFV? It's really about the transformation of the service provider infrastructure from the way it's built today to a cloudification of that infrastructure. It's about virtualizing the infrastructure and allowing services to run as virtual, uh, you know, virtualized functions on a general purpose compute infrastructure. But it really means much more than that because it's about the transformation of operations, it's about the transformation of services, so it's really a complete transformation of service provider infrastructure and operations, and that's what NFE enables. Yeah, I, I mean, an oversimplification I heard a couple of years ago at the Open Networking Summit was, if you think about like kind of the cable companies, they've got like apps and services that they could just push down to the consumer, um, and it's not you know, having to put different devices and everything, it's software. It goes in there and they deliver kind of that end-to-end -end service. So Correct. it's a little bit oversimplified. Uh, Chris, maybe you can help, you know, why are we sitting here talking to Cisco and Red Hat? You know, how does that work? How, how do you put together, uh, you know, the, the kind of the, the peanut butter and uh, chocolate that makes uh, the, the, this NFE solution? Well, so we're coming at this from the point of view of providing infrastructure for virtualizing these network functions. Um, what that means for us is there's open source expertise, there's specific projects, Linux, OpenStack, uh, some, some of the layers in between. Uh, we're working with Cisco, bringing, they're bringing to, to this picture huge depth in network experience. So this is a great partnership where our, our experience in open source, our, our ability to build up these fundamental platforms working together with uh, Cisco to bring these solutions, these networking solutions to customers, that's, that's really what the goal is here. Yeah, we, you know, Jonathan Bryce during the keynote said, hey, you know, telco slash NFV is now a very distinct use case, very distinct market space. What's, what's going on in the market that that, that all of a sudden is, is up on the keynote at OpenStack? What's, you know, what's changing for them from a networking perspective that, that that's, that's this critical, that we're having AT&T and Verizon and Swisscom all talked about as key customers? What's, what's the big change, what's the shift? You want me to take that? Sure. Uh, so, uh, so what happened is that when, uh, when the large service providers like AT&T and Verizon started looking at the way they run their networks and the way, the way they run their operations, and they compare that with the way the IT industry has evolved over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, they find that their speed of operations and their agility for, for delivering services is far lower compared to what the enterprises uh, and IT companies are doing. They look to the likes of the big web giants like Amazon and Google and see how they've transformed their network operations by using a lot of software and using a lot of virtualization. And the benefits of that have start, started becoming very abundantly clear because, the, because not everything is, is available at the click of a button, services can be provisioned through a, you know, through a GUI, there's no manual uh, operations or CLI involved which is how uh, network operators used to manage their networks. So the, so the telcos have been looking at what the rest of the IT industry has done and suddenly there is a, fee, there's a necessity that they want to transform themselves. And OpenStack has become central to that, to that transformation because the first thing that you need to do when you, when you start to virtualize your network, you need a very strong and scalable uh, virtualization infrastructure. And, over the, and, there, and being the, the, tel the telecom industry is, is very open to adopting open source and very open to adopting you know, standard-based uh, technology. And so OpenStack de facto became that, that platform of choice for virtualization. So over the last three years, uh, you know, we've seen a tremendous amount of uh, increase of adoption of OpenStack. It's almost become a de facto topic of conversation because NFV and OpenStack have actually become inseparable right now. I'd even go one step further and, and say the service providers are seeing an economic reality that doesn't really map out well into the future. And that is explosive data 
growth consumption through their networks. And as Vijay was saying, how are we operating these networks? And look at our kind of administrator to box ratio, and it's fundamentally different from the, the, the IT, uh, the enterprise or IT uh, workloads. And some of those environments are providing services over the top of these networks. So they're competing with a whole new class of, uh, of, of services. And looking at kind of a, you know, I like to call it an existential crisis. I mean, this is, this is real business urgency for these guys. Yep. And so it's, I, I think it's interesting when you, when you contrast, compare and contrast with the enterprise world where virtualization is, is well understood. Yep. Uh, so here, moving to cloud is kind of a refinement. It's an evolution of that path. On the service provider side, this is the beginning of a, of a journey from hardware centric to virtualization and it's driven by a real sense of urgency, which is why it's showing up at the top of the line for all of these uh, keynote sessions where you see this, this is really important, really important for these businesses. So, so uh, earlier in, in, when we talked to you, Chris, we talked about kind of the reliability and everything, but what about scale? I would think that really kind of the telcos and the way that they build this really speak to you know, the maturity of OpenStack uh, and, and how it can scale. Well, this is the early days of, of applying OpenStack to the NFE um, problem domain. We were seeing a lot of rough edges. So that, the, the, those days were, were identifying all of the areas where we needed to improve the platform. And that's what we were talking about earlier with Nova and Neutron and some of the core services in, in OpenStack. Today, we're seeing that this is actually functional. We're working together to bring this, our, our joint offering to customers they're deploying it not just in POCs, but in production, and moving actual traffic, you know, consumer-facing traffic with, these, with this technology, with OpenStack. I think over the last three years, uh, definitely there's been a smoothing of the edges. Uh, because three years back, it was even difficult to get, you know, to get a pod up reliably. Uh, you mentioned scale, and scale is a, is a big problem for, uh, for many of these customers. How do you run it with, with large, uh, large deployments? Uh, there was an announcement earlier today, uh, you know, where uh, Verizon announced that the largest, uh, the largest OpenStack deployment uh, working together with Red Hat. So it's an example of you know, the kind of scale that, uh, that customers are looking for. So it, I'd say the last three years have seen a significant stabilization and improvement of, uh, of OpenStack to address these telco kind of requirements. But we still have a long way to go. I think we still, it's still the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's possible. Uh, there's a next generation set of, of, uh, of capabilities required, uh, and that's where we're working together. And as Chris said, we're bringing in the deep expertise of networking and network operations, and, it's, and, and, and Red Hat brings in their deep open source and open stack in, uh, experience. And what we're, what we're looking to do is bring these two symbiotic uh, you know, capabilities together to make that infrastructure for the next gen SP. Yeah. So, VJ, could, could you just explain to our audience, you know, when they're, they're working with Cisco and Red Hat, you know, what are they actually getting? You know, what, what are the components that make it up, kind of hardware, software, uh, services component of that? So what, we have, so what Cisco has packaged together is we've, we've uh, announced a solution that we call the Cisco NFE infrastructure that, uh, that I lead inside of Cisco. And the NFE infrastructure, think of it as a pre-integrated hardware and software solution for NFE infrastructure. So it includes the necessary compute, uh, the networking, the storage, pre-packaged into a pod along with OpenStack. And we, you know, that's where we partner with Red Hat. We run uh, RHEL uh, Linux uh, KVM on the, on the compute servers. We use Red Hat Ceph uh, for our storage virtualization. And we use uh, Red Hat's Liberty release, the OSP8 release, as the OpenStack platform, which serves as the VIM uh, for, the, uh, for the NFE stack. And all of this together, what Cisco is doing, is that we are pre-packaging all of this into, a, that, into that integrated pod. And we are working together uh, with Red Hat to provide a single interface to the customer. Because, because the technology is so new and it's so complex, uh, many vendors are finding it difficult, many customers are finding it difficult having to work with multiple different vendors. And the problem becomes, uh, who do you call when things go wrong? Right? Who do you, how do you troubleshoot such a complex environment? So what Cisco is saying is that we're going to step forward as a single throat to choke for the customer. So they're a single vendor that they have to hold responsible when things go wrong. And we work in the back end with, with Red Hat to ensure that we provide that SLA for the telco customer. Because SLA is how they live and die. They live and die by the SLA they, they offer to their customers. So we guarantee that SLA, but working in the back end with Red Hat to make sure the issues are resolved for the customer. So the value to, to the customer is that we've taken away the complexity of OpenStack, we've made it available in a pre-integrated and pre-packaged manner, and the whole thing is available as an integrated single, you know, si call it a single window support system. Very good. But, you know, we, we heard AT&T talk quite a bit today about their journey. Verizon probably has a similar journey in terms of scale. 
Uh, but one of the things that was interesting to me, um, and it kind of went along with this idea that you know, OpenStack plays a role, there's lots of other challenges to deal with, whether it's scale or whatever. What are you seeing the conversation change as you talk to, to carriers? I mean, that conversation today, they were talking about writing a lot of, of their own software, which maybe didn't happen five years ago, 10 years ago when they were building telephone switches. How does the conversation change? Who's in the room? Who's making up that audience these days? Uh, well, from my point of view, this is a, a conversation that's happening in the upstream communities. Uh, there's some, of, some activity still in the standards bodies, uh, and then some in this sort of emerging open source space where we're trying to figure out how to apply standards to open source and how to open source can sort of feed back into the standards definition loop. Yeah. And so a lot of these conversations are happening in, in open public gotcha. forum. Uh, but you go back in time and you, you had a, a, a situation where really a standards focused industry, the customers would work together with vendors in the standards communities and then point at the, that standard and say to their vendor, give me, give me one of those. Yeah. And we're in a, in a new place now where we're trying to work together, defining what it is we're building, and then being able to deli deliver that as an integrated solution uh, to, the, to the end customer. Yeah. And one of the big changes in the way uh, the industry is, is, is responding to this is in the partnership and forums like OPNFE, because uh, OPNFE starts to becoming very critical because in the absence of standards, we need a reference system that all, you know, that, because every vendor is trying to build an NFE platform or NFE infrastructure. So OPNFE as a forum for arriving at a common reference defin uh, definition of the NFE stack is critical. And again, uh, Cisco and Red Hat are working very closely uh, as, a part as partners in OPNFE too. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and everything changes when you go from a 100, 500 page standard document to a bunch of GitHub repositories that you can actually go do things and, and validate if, if things are standards compliant. And no, it's a it's a it's unbelievable to think of that how much things have changed even over the last five or ten years. From yeah, that and perspective. It, it, it's a challenging transition for the operators that don't necessarily have the expertise, the developers right. in house to, to really engage in those communities. And so part of what we're doing as vendors, where we provide these these developer resources, we work together in in upstream communities like OPNFE to understand the actual requirements. How do we get, how do we translate this kind of foreign language of telco speak into something that's consumable by the OpenStack community? Because that's who's going to try to actually develop software to meet some of these functional requirements. Good. Yeah, and we, and we talked to, we were talking to Rakesh earlier about, you know, just uh, Red Hat's view of, you know, should there be carrier open stack, should there be, and I think what he was saying is the same thing you were. You, you have to work upstream, you have to sort of work in the areas, understand where scale is an issue, where redundancy is an issue, and then bring that back into core so people aren't getting That's variation right. A, variation B, variation C, and you get these, these crazy forking scenarios. Yeah, well, if you look at what is one of the goals, uh, one of the goals is, leveraging open source to build this next generation network right. uh, ar uh, architecture, this next generation network. If by leveraging open source we're creating a set of parallel forks, we've lost a significant amount of the developer efficiency that we gained by going to the open source development model. So it's absolutely critical to be upstream first and helping the upstream community understand why these problems matter to them. Because you know, initially, it might look like crazy talk. Why, why, do I, why do I care about your weird, esoteric NFE use case? Right. And what we're seeing is um, they're not necessarily that, the, the use cases aren't necessarily that strange or, or, or unique. The language to describe them may, might be special to the telco industry, but if you think about uh, a network function whose job in life is to efficiently uh, process packets, and the way we, we enable that is by carefully placing that application workload on a piece of hardware. An HPC workload could benefit from that same application type uh, placement. So we're looking for ways that we can communicate the requirements in ways that are sort of broadly accessible to the community. So, VJ, could, can you explain to our audience how big is this opportunity? How wide of an impact uh, will it have in the marketplace? I mean, we estimate this is a $20 billion opportunity uh, worldwide across the entire uh, NFE portfolio, um, you know, including the hardware, OpenStack, the BNF, the orchestration system. So it's a $20 billion opportunity over the next five years. Time. So it's, it's massive. Yeah. Hmm. So if you walked around and asked anybody here and you say, first impression of Red Hat, it's an open source company. First impression of Cisco, maybe not an open source company. Help us to, you know, is, is, that, is that a, uh, impression you're trying to change? I mean, obviously you've got an entire business unit now focused on NFV where open source is core. Is that, 
Is that a, something Cisco's trying to get out in the marketplace? So we've actively, Cisco's been actively investing in software uh, a lot more over the last many, many years. It's at least five years that uh, we've been focusing a lot more on software. Um, our open source strategy has evolved a lot over the last five years. Uh, you know, we are uh, probably the prime drivers of open daylight. Um, so we saw, uh, you know, we saw the coming of, of the open source movement in networking. And so we were, uh, you know, David Ward as the chairman of the Open Daylight uh, uh, Foundation. Uh, and you know, we have been very, very active uh, participants in both Open Daylight and OpenStack. Uh, we have a huge team uh, in Cisco uh, under Lou Tucker's organization, uh, which is actually actively investing in upstream development of OpenStack. So Cisco has been investing very heavily in software and very heavily in open source over the past few years. So it is a transformation because we do see where the, the, the market is moving to and we're responding to what we're seeing in the market. Absolutely. All right, so last question I have. For, for uh, people watching that haven't made it uh, to Austin, uh, you know, how do they find out more about the solution? How do they hear from some of their peers that are uh, leveraging these kind of technologies? BJ, start with you. Yeah. So uh, the, the the best starting place is to go to the uh, to the Cisco and Red Hat uh, product websites. Uh, both of us have product websites that point to the uh, that point to the uh, uh, the NFE infrastructure product page. Uh, in Cisco, it's called cisco.com/go/nfvi. Uh, so that's the URL. And as always, you can reach out to uh, to the, the Cisco account team contacts for customers and uh, the 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 open the, uh, the the community mailing list for uh, for reaching out to us. Yeah, Similar, similarly for us, we have a telco specific uh, portion of our redhat.com website and then we highlight customer success stories on redhat.com. So you can go there and learn about telco specific solutions and, and customer success stories. All right, well, Chris and Vijay, thank you so much for joining us here. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from OpenStack 2016 in Austin. Thanks for watching theCUBE. It's always fun to come back